Hey everyone, welcome back to the E-Trade tutorial series. In today's video, we're going to be hopping into the E-Trade mobile app and learning how to buy and sell stock in there. Now, don't worry to make sure you guys get the hang of it. I am going to go through the process of both buying and shorting stock, as well as closing open positions, and just learning how to adjust our default order quantities in the app. Now, jumping right into it and starting with opening up a brand new position, basically placing a brand new trade, what we need to do is look at the toolbar at the very bottom and find the trade page. As soon as we click on the trading button, a order ticket will pop up, in this case an order ticket to buy some shares of Microsoft, and that's just because Microsoft is the last stock that I was looking at. If I wanted to change the stock that I was trading, I would simply come up here to the search box in the upper right hand corner, and from there you're going to be able to search for any stock ticker that you want to trade. In this example, let's say I wanted to buy some shares of, let's say Facebook. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and type in FB up there, find it in the list, it's the very first one there, and go ahead and click on it. As soon as I do, at the very top, you can see I currently have Facebook selected, and you can see the last traded price for Facebook, 209.67. You can see it's down 81 cents currently, which is a 0.38% move. Now, more importantly, if we look down just a little bit further, we can actually see the order ticket that we're about to place, where we're going to specify how many shares do we want to buy, what price do we want to pay for it, and how long do we want that order good for. Breaking this thing down as simply as possible, it's actually pretty easy. You simply need to click on the thing that you want to change. So starting with the buy or sell button, right now I've got the buy button selected. If I were to click on that, you'll see it immediately flip over to sell or shorting the stock. Now in my case for this first example, since I didn't want to short the stock, I'm going to flip that back over to buy. And just to the right of that, we can see the quantity of shares we're about to buy. In this case, it defaults to 10. If I wanted to change that, let's say I instead wanted to buy, let's say 50 shares of Facebook, I'm just going to go ahead and click on that box there and type in 50. Now that I'm happy with that, we'll just go ahead and hit done in this keyboard and we've got 50 shares locked in. Now right below that, the next thing you're going to be looking at is the order type that you currently have selected. In my case, I currently have a limit order selected. If you wanted to change that to something else, you would simply click on the word limit there, and you're going to see all of the different order types pop up down below. Now you do see quite a few of them here, but the most popular ones that you're probably going to be using most often are simply going to be a limit order, a market order, or a stop order. Now, just as a reminder, a limit order simply means you are specifying a price. So you're saying, I only want to buy these shares of Apple if I can get it for this price or lower. Or in the case that you're selling, that price or higher. A market order, on the other hand, is simply an order that will fill immediately. And you're saying, I'll take whatever the current price is, just get me those shares right now. Now, the last one we'll talk about is the stop on quote, which is really just a stop market order. And you're basically saying, hey, get me out of this thing if I'm losing too much money. Now, technically you can use stops to enter into a long position or into a short position, but generally you're going to be using it to get you out of a position if you're losing too much. So let's say we get those 50 shares of Facebook and we said, man, if Facebook ever drops to 200, get me out of this thing. That would be an example of a stop market order. Now, in a later video, I'm going to try and touch on these other order types here, as well as the conditional orders down below, where you see OCO, one triggers OCO, and quote trigger. But for right now, limit, market, and stop market are the most popular ones. Now, for this example, I'm just going to leave it as a limit order. So I'm just going to click on limit again. And from there, just to the right of the word limit, we can actually see the price that we're setting. In this case, it defaults to the current price, 209.54. But let's say in this example, we only wanted to buy these shares of Facebook if it dropped down to, let's say, 205 bucks a share. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that price there, 209.32, and instead I'm going to type in 205 here and hit done. Now the very last thing I'm going to be looking at in this order ticket is the actual time in force, how long and when we want this order ticket good for. As of right now, you can see it is a day order, which means it's good from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. If it does not fill by 4 p.m., if I'm not able to buy these shares of Facebook for 205, the order ticket will just cancel itself. If I instead wanted to change that, let's say I wanted this order to try every single day to try and buy me some shares of Facebook at 205, I could always click on the word day here and change it to a good until cancel order. That means if this order does not fill today, I want it to try again tomorrow. If it doesn't happen tomorrow, try again the next day and the next day and so on until it either fills or until I cancel it. If I were to click on that time and force box again, GTC, you will see a lot of other options there, but really the most common ones you're going to be using are a day order, a GTC order, and an EXT order. So that last one, EXT, which we have not talked about yet, that just means it includes the pre and post market as well, the extended session. Now in my case, I am just going to leave it as a GTC order, so we're going to go ahead and click on that again, and I'm just going to look over this order ticket again just to make sure everything looks right. In this case, I'm saying I want to buy 50 shares of Facebook. If it ever drops down to 205 or lower, good until canceled. 
Right below there, you can see the estimated total. How much I would actually spend if this trade fills is 10,250 bucks. And if I'm happy with that, we'll simply hit preview down below. As soon as you click on that, you're gonna see a little confirmation box pop up, just confirming everything we already put on the previous screen. If you confirm everything looks right, you're happy with it, just go ahead and hit send order down below. From there, you're gonna get a little order confirmation, just confirming that the order has been sent to buy those 50 shares of Facebook at 205 or lower. If we wanted to later on check the status of that order or maybe even just outright cancel the order, we could go ahead and exit out of this and look in the lower right hand corner and find the menu button. Once you click on that, you're gonna see a bunch of tabs down below, but what I want you to find is the orders tab and go ahead and click on that. As soon as you do, you can see all of my current open orders or cancel orders for the day. And at the very top there, we can see my open order to buy 50 shares of Facebook. If you look right above that, you will see some instructions that say swipe left on order to modify. So we're gonna follow those instructions and put my finger on Facebook and scroll my finger to the left. As soon as I do, you can see three separate little buttons pop up. One to modify the order, which just means edit it in some way, change the price, change the quantity of shares, that kind of thing. To the right of that, you'll see the copy button, which just means you wanna duplicate this order in some way. And then just to the right of that is a cancel button, just to outright cancel the order, you change your mind. In our case, let's say I wanted to cancel this order, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit cancel here. From there, we'll just confirm that yes, we do wanna cancel it. And as soon as it submits, you'll see that the pending cancel has just flipped over to a cancel order. Now, I think you guys get the hang of it, but let's go ahead and try that one more time. And this time we're gonna be going over a shorting position. So going back to the trading button down at the very bottom of your screen, We'll then pull up an order ticket again for Facebook, but this time we're gonna flip it over to, let's say Coinbase. I'm gonna come up here to the search box in the upper right. I'm gonna go ahead and type in C-O-I-N for coin and click on it in the list down below. From there, just like before, you can see it builds out an order ticket to buy 10 shares of Coinbase at the current price. But since we wanted to short Coinbase, we're actually gonna flip this from a buy ticket to a sell ticket. Now, since I don't own any shares of Coinbase in this account, when I sell shares of stock that I don't own, it's automatically a short position. I'm automatically shorting shares of Coinbase. Now for this example, let's say we wanted to short 20 shares of the stock, so we're gonna go ahead and bump that up to 20 and hit done here. Let's also say I was happy with shorting it at the current price of 185.55 and I did only want it good for the day. So I'm gonna leave everything else the same and look at the preview button down below. As soon as I click on that, you can again see a little order confirmation box just confirming everything looks right. We're about to sell 20 shares to open because remember this is a shorting position. We're opening a new position and you can see we're doing so at a limit price of 185.55, just good for the day. Since I'm happy with this, I do want to send the order. We'll go ahead and hit send order down below and it'll say a little order confirmation just confirming that the ticket has been submitted. Now you can also see there that it did just flip over to order status filled, so the order has been filled. And if I go back to my positions page or my portfolio page down below, so right there you can see all of my current positions on Apple, Coin, and Microsoft. And if I were to click on Coin, you can see my 20 shares that were short on Coinbase. And right there it says negative 20 shares. Now that we got opening new positions out of the way, let's go over how you can actually close some of these positions once you actually open them. So first off, let's start with closing a open long position. So shares that we actually own, not that we shorted. So backing up a little bit, let's open up Apple here. And as soon as I clicked on it, you can see I've got 35 shares of the stock and I own it at 160.93. Now let's say I'm happy with this move. I'm happy with this gain that I'm up right now and I actually wanna close out that position. I'm gonna look at the close button in the lower left-hand corner. As soon as I click on that, it brings up an order ticket to automatically close out my position at the current price. So right there, you can see it built out an order ticket to sell my 35 shares with a limit order at 164.16, good for the day. Since I'm actually happy with this and I actually did wanna close out my entire position at the current price, I'm actually just gonna come down here to the preview button and once the order confirmation pulls up, I'm gonna hit send down below. From there, we can again see that our order ticket has been submitted. Now it is an open order and there we go. It just flipped over to filled. So I have sold my 35 shares of Apple at 164.16. Going back to my portfolio page and looking at the positions page, you can see that Apple is now gone because we have closed out that position. But let's move on to closing out the short position next, the short position on Coinbase. Now to do that, we're gonna do just like we did before. We're gonna find the symbol in our list here, Coinbase, and I'm simply gonna click on it. As soon as I do, you can see all of the positions I currently have on Coinbase. So you can see my short share position at the very top, as well as the put down below. If I wanted to close out the short position on Coinbase and not the put, I'm simply gonna click on it. So click on the share quantity there. And now that I have it selected, I'm gonna find the close button down in the lower left-hand corner. 
As soon as I click on that, just like before, it takes me to an order ticket to close out my short position. And remember, to close a short, we need to buy back those shares. In this case, I'm putting an order in to buy back those 20 shares of Coinbase at a limit price of 184.87. Now let's say for this example though, I didn't actually want to buy it back at the current price. I only wanted to buy it back if it dropped down to 180. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the price here, 184.87, and instead type in 180 and hit done. I also want to change the time and force from a day order to a good until cancel order because I want to try every single day and try and get out at this profit target. Now that I'm happy with it, we'll go ahead and hit the preview button and check out the order confirmation to make sure everything looks right. In my case it does, we're placing a limit order at 180, good until canceled. Since I want to submit this, we'll hit send order. And there we go, we can see our order has been submitted and just like before, if we wanted to check on the status of that, we could come down here to menu and click on orders and there we go. There's our open order to buy back those 20 shares. Now hopefully that gave you enough experience with actually trading on here, how to open up new positions, how to short stock and close open positions, but let's go over how to change your default order quantities real quick. To do that, all you have to do is come down here to the menu button, lower right hand corner. From there, I'm going to need you to scroll all the way down to the bottom and find the settings button. Looks like a little gear icon. From there, as soon as you click on it, you're brought to the settings menu, which is where you can change a lot of the settings in the app, but we're actually looking for the trade quantities button. As soon as we click on trade quantities, you will see the ability to change it for equities, options, spreads, and futures. But in today's video, we're just going to change it for equities, so for stock. So go ahead and click on equities up there. From there, you can see my current default trade quantity is 10 shares at a time. So anytime I build out an order ticket, 10 automatically populates there. If you wanted to change that, let's say you typically trade 50 shares at a time. We would just click on that and type in 50 and then hit done. The box right below it where it says default trade increment is every time you hit the plus or minus button, how many shares does it change it by? Since I currently have 10 shares there, it means if I were to hit the plus button next to the quantity box, it would change it from 50 to 60. If I were to hit the minus button, it would change it from 50 to 40, so 10 shares at a time. The last one in the list there is the default trade price, and currently it's just at the market price. So the price box is always going to default to whatever the current price is for that stock. If you were to click on that, you can see a few other options, uh, mid-market, with market, and really the only time you're going to change that is probably going to be for options contracts. So I personally would just leave it alone for, uh, for equities, but maybe for options, change it to the mid. Now, I think that's just about everything you guys need to know to buy and sell stock in the E-Trade mobile app. If I did miss anything or you guys have any additional questions for me, please let me know down below. If you do want to learn more about the platform, be sure to check out my E-Trade tutorial playlist. I'll be creating tutorials for just about everything in there, so if you want to learn more, check it out. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. I hope you guys all have an amazing rest of your week, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.